Art Pocket at www.artpocket.co.uk and we're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter under at Art Pocket UK. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's nearly summer, so um, well done for, for staying with it. Um, today we're going to be making, oh, hang on, let's put that forward. There we go. Uh, we're going to be making some abstract collages. Um, and hopefully you've got all these um, uh, materials with you. Um, what's not on here is you do need a pencil or a graphite stick. So I'm not sure if you've had that, but just have a scurry around and get yourself a pencil or a graphite stick right now. Um, and the first, uh, so our, our objectives are we're going to be deconstru deconstructing and then recomposing. So in my work, I love to kind of cut and recollage um, and be uh, a little bit free and kind of haphazard um, with making pattern. We're only going to be using um, a limited colour palette, um, which could be one, two or three colours, um, depending on what you choose. We're going to be using frottage and photography to record um, compositions. And we're going to hopefully come out with um, a fabric sample um, collage um, that you can take further um, with uh, embellishment and stitch later. We're probably not going to achieve all of that in an hour. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is grab two sheets of white paper um, that are A5 and your patterned envelope or brown envelope. So I love envelopes. I think they're a fantastic free um, resource and uh, they often come with lots of nice print on the inside. So you can choose to use the bit with the window or you can choose, um, choose the other side. But if it's not cut to A5, just quickly cut it to um, the same shape as your three pieces. And you're going to put your envelope underneath. Then you're going to layer up your um, one piece of white paper and then your second piece, okay? And then what I would like you to do is use some paper clips just to clip them together, okay? And I'm using Emma as my, <laughs> as my timer. Um, so when you've clipped yours together, give me a shout. <laughs> so all yours are all clipped, perfect. Okay, so what you're gonna do is take your scissors for a walk. So I don't want you to overthink this, um, but I'd really just like you to make sure that your scissors don't go in a straight line across the page. So if you've been working on um, particular imagery, there might be shapes in your mind. You might be quite a, um, an angular person or quite a curvy person, it doesn't matter. But I would like you to make um, three cuts across your page, okay? So the first cut I'm going to make is going to be something like this. And hopefully you can all see the table. Do give us a shout if for any reason you can't see that. So I've cut my page um, in two and then I'm going to do another cut this way. Okay, and then I might just cut this last piece one more. So this should be three cuts, which makes four pieces, okay? And if you are kind of struggling, I've just got some images on the screen um, that might give you some ideas about shapes that you can cut. So that's mine. It's really odd not seeing faces and I can't even see your reactions for thumbs up, I don't think. Can I, can I do, do everybody? Oh, I can a little bit. So if you, if you've got any questions, put it in the chat um, or wave your little hand in the air. <laughs> so, um, we've just got like a couple of uh, responses from people to say that they can't see the table. Um, okay, so let me pin that one. Can you see it now? Hopefully. Um, so the participants might need to have a little play on their own Zoom account. So they might need to just pin the, the table video um, just to make sure that shows up on screen nice and clearly. So if you wanted to do that, there are, there are um, when you see the grid view of all the speakers, there's yeah. like three, three little dots. Um, you should be able to. Hope, I've just spotlighted it. So hopefully that might help. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So, hopefully, um, 
you'll be able to see on my PowerPoint as well. So what I want you to do next is I'd like you to take the top layer of your paper pieces. So just one, one sheet of white paper and I'd like you to recompose it. So thinking about kind of positive and negative space, let me move those out of the way. So I want you to jumble it up um, and think about making yourself a kind of pleasing um, pattern in some way, shape or form. You can turn them any which way you like. And just have, spend a minute just jiffling it about and moving it and finding a composition that you find works for you. So, there we go, that's gonna be mine. Okay. And then when you're happy with your composition, I'd like you to take a sheet of A4 paper and lay it over the top. Now, depending on how far apart, your A4 paper may not cover it all, but it doesn't matter. So take your A4 sheet of paper, put it over, and then masking tape it in the corners. Okay. And then arm yourself with either a graphite stick or a pencil. So Tom and Emma, are you still with us? <laughs> oh, you're, you're muted, Emma. <laughs> yeah, it's going Pretty great. Cool. I'm just putting my masking tape down now. Fabulous. Yes, I'm just, I'm just laying my paper over. Um, I'm just getting some tape ready. Excellent. So I like to make everything I do count um, and make a piece of work along the way uh, at every stage. So why, you know, why just cut straight to the fabric collage when we could generate a load of imagery on, along the way? So the, the next task, we're going to um, use the method of frottage. Um, sorry, this is positive and negative space in case you weren't familiar. And we're going to use, I'm going to use the side of a graphite stick, but you could easily use um, just the edge of a pencil. And we're going to make a rubbing because the pieces of paper will, um, will leave a kind of shadow as to where they are. Okay, so rub. And it, I like to rub... Um, my graphite stick all in the same direction because it looks nice and neat. If you were going to continue this or carry this on later, you could also think about um, using other colours like coloured uh, wax crayons or coloured pencils. But we'll we'll stick with grayscale for the minute. Okay, so you should have in a minute or so. Um, a frottage rubbing to kind of document your thought processes. I think one of the key things if you go on to study at HE or FE, uh, further educational degree, is um, sort of show your thought processes. So um, document everything and when you've got uh, one outcome, make it turn into five. So always kind of think about development. Okay, so I'm gonna put that to one side. The next thing that I would like you to do is to take your second layer. So take that um, uh, graphite rubbing away. Take your second layer of white and just play with the addition of another layer. So you should have two uh, A5 sheets of the same color. I've got hopefully three different tones of white so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But you've now got double, double the, the, um, the pieces to play with. So they're going to overlap or underlap. 
however you um, choose to layer them. So spend another minute just seeing what happens if you use all of them. What kind of interesting um, sort of differences can you get just with the colour white? So I'm going to go something like that. You may decide that you want to omit some of the pieces that you don't need them all. I'm going to use every single one. So hopefully you can see that, although it is all in white. And when you are um, happy with your composition, you're going to do the same thing again. And you're going to lay your um, another sheet of A4 over the top. and make another rubbing. And this uh, botosh rubbing should be a little bit busier because you've got more pieces. So I'm going to make my... So you get interesting things happen where the sort of pages lay over one another. There's sort of different tonal um, variations in your rubbings. So give me a thumbs up, somebody, when you've finished your frottage. Fritter. <laughs> Can you do, can you do the fun? I, I can see Fritha and Joanna Bunce and Thrith, I can't say it, Fritha. If you give me a thumbs up, then I'll know that you're, you're, you're keeping um, up with me. If it helps, I have done my second rubbing. Yay. Okay, so you've got two frottages. And what we're gonna do next. Oh, I'm just finishing mine. Oh, oh we've got a thumbs up from Camilla. Excellent, Camilla, thank you. And what you could do um, later is actually play about with a bit of um, relief. So if you were to use pieces of rolled up um, masking tape or those little sticky foam fixers, and you can kind of layer up and actually create a more um, slightly raised collage, if I can stick this down. So the pieces will slightly lift forward of one another. Um, we're not going to do that now because you'd spend 45 minutes sticking down the paper. But again, you've now got three outcomes um, from this first, you know, this quick cut, cut and um, uh, deconstruct activity. So the next thing I want you to do, I'm going to race on ahead <laughs> in the hope that you're all keeping up with me. Oh, hello. <laughs> Turn yourself off. Um, I'd like you to take the pieces of, um, what's that called? Envelope. And I'd like you to lay those over the top of, you could try laying them over the top of the collage pieces, or you could lay them over the top of your actual rubbing. So spend another couple of minutes just adding the envelopes and I quite like the little unexpected um, shapes that the I get from the the little window that the envelope has okay so we've now got four outcomes are we taking a rubbing of this one no, we're just going to leave this, just we're playing with that idea of colour. So we've started to add a little bit of a layer of colour or pattern um, from our uh, envelopes. So once you've done that, shout if I'm... Just, um, just quickly, I'm just going to throw it out there. It'd be really nice if you could um, share these with us on our Instagram um, or like email them to me, uh, email them to studentrecruitment at nua.ac.uk. Um, be really great to see all your outcomes uh, from this little section. So maybe you could take like a little picture of it on your phone. Um, 
have like a series of pictures of all your outcomes. That'd be great. I'll um, put that email address in the, the chat as well. Thanks, Tom. Excellent. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume that you're all laid up with your envelope on top of either your frottage or your um, white composition collage. And what I want you to do is either use your camera phone if you're not actually watching <laughs> with it. If you haven't got your camera phone um, to take this, you can easily make yourself a, um, two L's by just cutting a sheet of A4 um, once and then twice to make yourself two L's. And I'd like you either using your um, camera phone or a viewfinder just have a little play and just lay and zoom in to some of those compositions, okay? Now, if you haven't got your camera phone um, handy, you could make a little rubbing. So my camera phone's been used, so I'm going to grab a sheet of paper and you could make a little rubbing within the aperture that you've made just to kind of pick out those zoomed in compositions. I'd quite like you to gather maybe five if you can. So obviously with the um, envelope, if you're doing a rubbing over the top, you're not going to be able to depict the different colours. Um, so taking a photo is ideal. But you might choose zoom into different areas. I really like just the the tones of white particularly. So did you have your, your camera phone handy Emma or are you? Um, I did I have taken uh, six now. <laughs> well done yeah you keep going. <laughs> Just cracking on with it. Exactly. What I love about taking the photo is that it, when you look through the lens of, of the camera, it actually looks different to real life as well. So like the, the plastic from the envelope, it, it kind of reflects some of the light and it, it kind of does something quite interesting with the lens. It's great. And I really like all the shadows that are made, like, because I'm using quite thick paper. So when yeah. I layer them all up, there's lots of shadows that are made that like, I didn't think were shadows, but the camera phone really picks those up. So that's quite nice. And if you were then to um, actually, you, you know, uh, sort of set them off one another, Emma, that would produce a really nice kind of relief collage. So I don't know, if, I don't know how many people are, um, sort of chose this workshop because they are textile, um, either teachers or students or fashion. Um, but this is, you know, if you're an illustrator or a graphic designer, this is a really nice way of kind of playing with um, with shapes with positive and negative space. You could, you know, this might then lead into something more three dimensional. Um, so it's a really nice drawing activity or kind of visual um, gathering activity, regardless of what your discipline area is. Um, and something that is I quite like it because it's quite free and you, it's you don't sort of get too worried about um, getting it right in some respects. Tom might not be saying that when he starts it stitching, but. <laughs> okay. it's great. So, we're gonna move on to um, think about taking this into fabric, okay? Now, we've created um, several sort of uh, visual outcomes. Um, one which is made up of one color layered on top of another. We've got one that is two, two colours with the um, uh, envelopes and the uh, frottage. And then we've also got the kind of frottage themselves. So think about colours that you particularly like to work with. Do they want to be contrasting? Do they want to be um, complementary? Do they want to be one uh, one colour but different tones of those colours. So grab yourself from your stash, from your bundle that you've got, um, however many colours you want to use, okay? And get those um, in front of you. And you may want to, if you are using your camera phone, before you move everything, you might just want to take a photograph of your, um, your 
white composition because that may well uh, you're going to need those pieces in a minute so before you destroy it take a photo if you can okay so so imagine how full your sketchbook would be now or will be now after all those activities <laughs> and we're going to move on to uh starting to uh, create fabric collages. So what I'd like you to do is collect together one set of your um, uh, temp uh, the pieces that you've cut out and lay them on one sheet of fabric, okay? And then you can draw around them with, I've just used a biro. If anybody um, has a friction pen handy you can actually draw around it and then iron away after you've cut the the mark so that's my go-to toolkit for being a textile teacher um, and what I'd like you to do is I'm going to stop the share for just a minute so you can just see me so draw around and then cut out the different shapes okay so you're now using your cut out pieces as um, templates. So cut round. And it might be that there was a particular um, shape that you made that you, you liked. So you might want two pieces of that, but cut yourself at least four fabric pieces. Okay, and I'm gonna, in true Blue Peter style, I've already cut mine out. <laughs> like any good presenter would do. Um, and once you've cut them out, you can decide um, how you're going to present them on your background um, fabric. So because I quite like that shape, I'm going to add another one in there. So if you're wanting to work um, just in one colour and kind of layer up, you can do that. Um, if you want to combine and cut a second layer of, um, of colour, then cut those out if you finish cutting the first lot out. So I'm going to wait for Tom and Emma to they're my paces. I'm getting them. <laughs> they're like front runners. <laughs> I think I always underestimate like how many curves I put in and then I try yeah. to cut them out, out of fabric and it's Yeah, I should have um, I should have warned you really, shouldn't I? Right. Well, the rain's coming down here. Hopefully it's not going to get noisy. Oh, joy. <laughs> right, I have now cut my pieces out. Excellent. So <laughs> when you cut them out, again, like you did at the very beginning, just have a little play. You might already have a composition in mind um, that you take from your, um, your frottage, or you might want to create something new. But I want you to jiffle them about rotate, flip, turn, and recompose those um, cut out pieces to produce something that you find visually appealing. And we've gone for quite abstract shapes, but if you were, you know, um, this could work really well if you were kind of thinking about silhouettes of flowers or, I don't know, bottles are really lovely. Um, so that, objects um so it might be if you um if you were going to approach this again you might be looking at a, a series of objects and they might be your inspiration for the shapes that you're cutting um rather than just freestyle cutting but there's something lovely about that as well Okay, let me get my get the picture back up again. Just to let um, you know, if 
any of you have joined, I see that someone's joined a little bit late. Um, if you do want to access what we've been getting up to so far, then we will be sending out a, a recording um, to anyone who, who requests it, uh, and as well as the PowerPoint as well. Okay. Excellent. I so, think we are also, we have um, made these into worksheets. So um, there, there will be, we, we can, you can access a worksheet as well. Um, if you're interested in getting that. So I've used quite, um, I've gone for a, two different sort of shades of blue, a turquoise and a dark blue. And also I've chosen my background layer is a kind of more textured um, fabric. And the next thing to think about is how do I want my stitch and the, the way I secure it to kind of work with um, with my fabric collage. So, so we're there already. So there's a few um, different methods of securing. Quite frankly, if you hate sewing, you can take a stapler to it and do it that way. So Tom. Ooh. <laughs> um, but just for those of you, um, I'll go through a few different methods. Not that I want to teach grannies to, stu to suck eggs, but I think it's useful. So the one method, obviously, is to, um, to pin. So you could use loads and loads of pins to, um, to, to kind of create a pattern over the top. Okay. Um, another method is to use a simple in-out running stitch around the edge. So running stitch, make sure you put a knot at the end of your thread. Um, I'm going to show the running stitch with just an ordinary, uh, like a machine thread. So it'll be quite a fine thread. So I've pinned this piece down and running stitch is literally weaving in and out. Okay, so. And you can choose how uh, wide or narrow your or no it should be long or short shouldn't it not wide or narrow how long or short your um your stitches so running stitch is one method you could make quite a feature of that running stitch by uh completely stitching in lines Ooh, where are you so more like this one so um doing almost like a series of uh, linear sort of slow stitches um, in and out. So your, your stitch can be kind of add, be an, another element of adding a mark um, or texture to your fabric. If you're not um, too keen on too much sewing, the second um, option is to tie little knots. So like the, um, hopefully you can see it, the piece on the right, um, the image on the right, let me move. So in order to do knots, you're going to kind of anchor in key parts of the, um, the, the pattern piece. So you're going to go in from the top and leave yourself a little tail, come back up through and then tie a knot. And then you might want to leave your, um, the tails of your knots quite long or you might want to cut them quite short. So I've done like mine in a, um, a sort of contrasting red so I can really see it. So it becomes quite obvious. So in from the top, oh, I've gone right through. In from the top. And tie a knot. So that's a nice quick method of kind of securing it down. Oh, I'm caught over a pin, right. And then for those that are quite interested in embroidery, the third um, method I'm going to show you is the French knot. 
because I I'm quite partial to a French knot. So we're going to come from the bottom, from the underside of the fabric up. And then I hold my fabric, uh, my sorry, my thread, my yarn across, wrap it around the end of my needle a couple of times. And then with my thumb, hold it down and keep it loose, but pull my needle through. Make a knot and then I'm going into the next door to the thread that I have, uh, the stitch that I've come out of to make a little knot. Did you catch that, Tom? <laughs> I've been focusing on... Um... Spinning. <laughs> <laughs> My stapler. Um... <laughs> Uh, the uh, the running stitch, but how do you tie off when you've done? You're yeah, happy with with your your stitching. How do you kind of tie it off at the end? I know that might seem like a really simple question. Simple questions are often the most important. So if I get to the end of my line, I would oh, let's take that pin out. I keep catching the pins. I would get to the end of my line. I'd go to the back. So needle on the back of the fabric. Yep. If I turn it over, oh, I'm all caught up now. Here we go. I don't know how well you can see that. I do, so I'm in the back of my fabric and I do a tiny little stitch, pull it and thread through. So I leave a little loop and thread through and it's kind of, it's like a flat knot. Yeah. Does that make sense? So if you do it quite discreetly on the back, so you don't go all the way through to the front, but you just catch a few of those fibres at the back. Yeah. And then pull it through, leave a little loop, and then needle through the loop. Got you. Yeah? That's great. So if you spend... I've lost the plot with what where we are in time. If you spend um, five minutes just thinking about securing this first layer of colour, okay, or well, these first um, pieces. And then if there's any questions, um, now's a really good op uh, opportunity to ask them. Could you tell us a little bit about your background? Oh yeah, so I, uh, I trained in textile design, I did my degree in, well, about 20 years ago, um, uh, at Chelsea in London. I then um, did a bit of freelance design work for um, designing bags and baby shoes and things. Um, and then I went into teaching. And since then I've kind of um, moved away from textiles in a design sense. Um, and I'm more of a printmaker and use kind of 3D processes. But my work is very much about the surface of an object or kind of capturing a, a moment in time. Um, and it's very monochrome. <laughs> so I spent years studying, you know, colour <laughs> and I shy away and go very much to black and white. So this is one of my pieces actually behind me. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. I have to unspotlight this one. Oh yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Uh, cancel the spotlight. But yeah. So it's, it's all very, yeah, so I look at, um, uh, sort of yeah workers and workmen and buildings and construction sites and I'm quite interested in kind of the marks that are left behind when something's made oh. so these are all made from prints from my husband's uh, workbench oh wow yeah so that's that's what my work's about in a nutshell <laughs> thank you It's interesting, you train in something and then actually through teaching, I've kind of, you know, my, my, uh, my media has kind of grown um, into, because as I, as I learned to teach things like printmaking, I kind of got, got quite excited about that. But quite <laughs> often I'll use a pin to prick through, fat, through paper or um, I'll use fabric to print with. So textiles does come back quite a lot into my work. Yeah. And what, what subjects does this kind of cross over with? What, this technique? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, or, or this way of working, yeah. I think all discipline areas. I think, um, actually, whether you're fashion design or um, sculpture, I think that element of looking at um, the, the positive the, and the negative um, is really important. I think that idea, this really lends, it, it allows you to play yeah. and kind of explore possibilities, you know, just by turning a piece of paper around three or four times um, and flipping it, you've, you're creating different imagery every time. Um, it's got loads of potential for being taken into print and surface pattern. Mm. Um, and even, um, you know, sort of stencil screen print. Um, yeah. And yeah, just, yeah, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule anything out apart from maybe um, games design. <laughs> But maybe it's just a background. <laughs> maybe it's a wall. <laughs> Absolutely. I know you spoke a little bit about um, uh, like different types of thread. Last yeah. Time. Uh, yeah, I did. So um, I think the the quality of your thread. So whether it's very fine and delicate, or whether you're using something thicker, like the embroidery uh, red embroidery thread that I've been using. Um, will add another kind of layer and kind of, um, you know, you could be using quite a hairy uh, sort of fibrous thread that will kind of break a little bit and it will give you another kind of um, surface and uh, texture to your work. I really like this one, it's very black and white and monochrome, but I like the way that the stitch um, is sort of, uh, hidden and revealed underneath the le next layer and you might think about that so I don't know how long have we been sewing for have we done five minutes yet <laughs> I've lost count <laughs> Not fair. Uh, yeah I think we've, we're near five minutes but I think yeah. I think um it'd be interesting to see where other people are at I'm as a novice I've I've managed to make two lines of, of thread which I'm delighted by <laughs> Um, but uh, it'd be interesting to, if, if anyone else is kind of feels like they're done, if you could kind of um, just let us know over, over the chat um, with, with this, this kind of part. But I would imagine people are kind of working. This is something you can spend all afternoon. You can spend all afternoon, you're right. You, you could keep going. So, if, oh, what still someone who's still pinning. Oh, still pinning. Okay. Amy, you're, that's good. Keep, keep pinning. That's okay. I like to rush you through. I'm <laughs> famed. Um, sewing, excellent row, brilliant. <laughs> I'm famed for trying to cram in as much as I can into five minutes. Well, oh, I'm glad she's to loving it, yay. Thank you. There's something incredibly therapeutic about sewing, or even just pinning, Imi, because actually that's quite a nice technique. I had some beautiful little like miniature pins that were kind of brass pins. And so, you know, if you, if you like to go down and have a look at the haberdashers, actually the pins are beautiful. So they can just remain in, in the work and not even be taken out. Mine actually have these lovely um, big red flowers on the end. Um, so they, I don't know if anyone can see, oh, mate. but they have like a uh, lovely uh, round flat, heads on the top that are just pure joy that I leave in sometimes. I'm like, this is, this is nice. I can't, yeah, can't take that out. No. And maybe that's the next development. Maybe you need to then add kind of um, another thing to embellish or start yeah. to cut circles in different mm -hmm. shapes. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of next thing that, you know, the one thing leads on to the, the other, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. I think my, my mantra is that, you know, just embrace the happy accident, the happenstance. And that's why I really like this um, activity, because there's no, there's no um, foreseen outcome. Yeah. Mm. I think you can get very, when you're making work, you've, you've got an idea in mind um, all the time of what it's going to look like. And when you're asked to cut and just turn it around and produce something different with it, you, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, and, and I, I think this is quite a releasing kind of activity to do anyway, because like, 
Because you do get so hung up on aesthetics a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, that this is, it's quite, yeah, it's very freeing. Like, and like you say, really therapeutic. Frottage as well, that kind of making rubbings is a lovely um, way of gathering visual research when you're maybe a little bit um, frightened of drawing, but you're still making that mark, you're still um, gathering that, it's still taking it one step away from, um, you know, a photo, flat photo image, which sometimes can be the kind of safe way to, to gather visual research, but you're, you're you're getting something that has a bit of texture and has more information because of the rubbing when you look at it you you know just by using a graphite or pencil you get different kind of um uh sort of densities of your mark sometimes it can be quite furry and fluffy and it's the the frottage itself might dictate or might indicate the kind of um, thread that you want to stitch with because if I was to translate these lines into stitch, I might choose something really fine for that dark layer here. Um, and I might want to choose a very furry kind of running stitch for all these marks here, if that makes sense. And with, with textiles, I think it's really important to, um, to gather particularly because it is a very tactile process you need to gain uh, sort of gather a, a sense of the surface or of something you need something to indicate what threads or what kind of fabrics you're going to um, select so you do you know drawing and visual research is really important especially okay I'm going to, have we got any more chat? Any? Later. Don't get kids to Google what frottage is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I won't ask what it is, because I think we've got young people here too. <laughs> Right. Oh, I think the rain may have come to Norwich. Pardon? Oh, is it? Is it mm. coming down? It's, it's getting here. <laughs> That's summer. <laughs> well, the school holidays are about to start, so yeah. Of course it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to get you to stop where you are. If you're still sewing, just prod your needle into the bit that you're sewing, um, because You've laid one set of your pieces of fabric um, down, either pinned or you might have started stitching. So I'd like you to add another layer on. And this is where you can really think about the stitching that's going to kind of be seen and kind of or hidden between um, each of the pieces. So take your, might be your second layer um, or it might be a different colour or the same colour and depending on what you're doing. But if you've got some extra pieces, now's your opportunity to sort of add them in and have a play with layering up a little bit more and pinning those down. And again, you could be here for six hours doing this. This is another nice way to develop or to generate lots of work quickly by laying the pieces down, photographing them, moving them around and re repositioning them and photographing them and, you know, or sticking them under a, um, a photocopier or something because you've then kind of developed 10 outcomes mm -hmm. from one, if that makes sense. I'd be interested, is anybody um, that's with us, are they thinking about um, textiles or creative, um, creative education at a higher level or further education? Any? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I do know that um, uh, um, if you 
So if you photocopy, if you spray mount a piece of fabric to a piece of paper, you can photocopy onto fabric. So it might yeah. be quite nice to like photocopy some of your collages of yeah. fabric onto another piece of fabric. Um, and then, and then, you know, like stitch your, stitch your, um, uh, shapes onto that. That might be quite a nice, uh, yeah. Don't do that at, at school though. No. Just in case you jam their photo. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> But yeah, it could be really effective. I, I've never dared put fabric through my own. <laughs> <laughs> or the college's one when I was there. <laughs> oh, I used to. That's uh, <laughs> terrible, isn't it? So whilst you're kind of playing with that second layer or you might just be continuing to um to add your stitched embellishment or kind of securing or anchoring down your pieces of fabric i thought i could talk to you about just show you some examples of where this kind of approach has been used in um, different discipline areas so um i don't know some of you might be aware of um matthew harris um he does a lot of mark making onto fabric and paper and then he will cut and reconstruct so he kind of dribbles and draws um, and dr dribbles dye onto fabric and then he he'll cut and reconstruct and then um, and then stitch the pieces together and it's very um, sort of uh, I can't think of the word what is it when you what's the word <laughs> intuitive that's the word so just kind of you know reactive to what he's doing. Um, it's a really uh, nice example of um, Paula Kovarik, who um, is a quilter, um, but again, making kind of small scale um, compositions that she's kind of cut and cutting and, and reconstructing. Um, and I really, I, I picked up, I don't know if many of you know, John Piper, we remember him for his, um, for his buildings and architectural um, sort of wax resist paintings and drawings but actually he did a, um, a series of textile designs and I found this um, this print that he'd done which I thought was very it felt very much like this could um, lend itself this technique could lend itself to something like a surface print um, and then in terms of fine art um, my personal uh, favourite artist is Eduardo Chilida, who is at the Sainsbury Centre. So if you're local to Norwich, you can go and see his work. Um, he did both um, paper and prints and also big public art sort of sculptures. Um, but he's very interested in this idea of space. Um, he trained as an architect and actually he was a professional footballer before he was an architect, oddly. Um, but he's, he's very much about the idea of volume and mass and space. Um, and he um, did these sort of cut out paper pieces, but they're only anchored at the top. And again, you're, you might want your, your fabric collages to be hung and be a bit more kind of, um, a bit more floaty. Um, Matt Gonzalez goes and scours um, cities and picks up lots of pieces of um, discarded paper and then makes these incredibly intricate um, layered up paper collages um, often they're kind of cut like one color or you know um, so yeah so thinking more kind of fine art based and then fashion design um, so uh, I was looking at this deconstructed blazer by Comme de Garçon um, and that's another really lovely method of you know taking something apart and then reconstructing it, but flipping, you know, your lapels upside down or making your, your, your shirt into a skirt, for example. Um, and I really like this uh, Voids by Charlotte Ham. Um, this very kind of boxy, um, like something, you know, I don't know how she's managed to keep it so it holds its shape. Um, and also Yohi, Yo, Yo, and Yamamoto, we'll go with that. Um, but has taken these pieces and I think cut and then folded them back on themselves. Um, so they again sort of reveal little bits of um, the wearer underneath. Um, in terms of if you've kind of enjoyed this, um, we've kind of chatted a little bit about it before, but 
you might think about going into um, textiles and fashion at A level or BTEC or degree, depending on what level you're studying at the moment. Um, Foundation Diploma in Art and Design will give you another kind of um, introduction to all the creative discipline areas. Um, and like I say, I mean, this, uh, this technique will be relevant to any creative discipline when you're kind of gathering visual research or gathering ideas, um, playing with possibilities. Um, but particularly if you're thinking about textiles, either applied or fine art, fashion um, or fine art, I think it's really relevant. So, and I'm gonna, the last slide is a reminder. <laughs> for the quilting <laughs> <laughs> thanks um yeah just so everyone i know there are a few people who joined in um a little late uh just so everyone does know we do we are running a quilting uh project at the minute so if you wanted to submit a 15 by 15 centimeter patch for our communal quilt in response to covid19 we would love to see it um hopefully this will be um presented uh, when we're all allowed out uh, at the forum um, and it'll be made into a giant communal quilt where we can you know have like a bit of a shared experience um, other than that I think we're pretty much back well we've got five minutes um, should we open it up to questions uh, if anyone's got any questions for Hannah Laura um, or myself or Tom um, we'd be happy to answer uh, anything over the chat if not, massive thanks to Hannah Laura for running the workshop. I know I've had a great time. Thanks for um, being my pacer. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is what I've made so far, uh, by the way. Um, I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, there's a lot of flapping around, but it's, it's quite That's super. Thanks. Excellent. How's yours gone, Tom? It's going okay. I've been... Oh, lovely. With, oh, joy. With, with my stitches. I like the pins actually, the safety pins are a lovely idea. Thank you. Yours looks a bit like a kind of Russian constructivist, sort of, I don't know, like, isn't it? With yeah, the... that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I've literally learned how to sew today, so that, that was, uh, that's a life skill that I've picked up through this workshop. Thank you very much. So um, Linda's just put in the uh, group chat, um, how many layers would you normally explore in your work? So is there like possibility to do more than more than two, more than three? Oh God, yeah. You, I mean, you could keep layering up. Um, I think what could be really interesting is if you were to use um, shears. So, you know, uh, so you create different kind of tones. Uh, where's it gone? So for example, I have some little bits here. Where are they? So you might start to layer up i love the idea of kind of being able to see i don't know if you can see that very well it's a bit shiny but i like the idea of little the 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 underneath kind of peeking through so you could keep going and going um it's yeah it's kind of subject to how you like things to look really oh you could use prit stick that's not a bad idea. Also, um, what's that stuff? Uh, you can get a spray, can't you? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 50-50 or 20-20. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, so you could spray the fabric down. And the other method would be to use um, iron your pieces on and use Bondaweb. And so no sewing required at all. I decided that we wouldn't make it too complicated with an iron. Um, but Bondaweb is brilliant for quick um, fabric collage. Um, and you could pre, uh, pre what you know, pre bondaweb your fabric um, first, and then cut it out. You can also get um, uh, they use it for like when you do paper patchwork. Um, it's like a, a fabric glue pen, um, yeah. and it's a bit like Pritt stick, but there's less residue. So when you're sewing through it, if you wanted to add stitch, there's less less likelihood that your needle will get really tacky. Um, so it's quite, it's, it's, it's not a lot either um, for a fabric clothing. We've got some more messages. <laughs> Glad it was not Bondaweb. <laughs> <laughs> if there's, yeah, but Bondaweb's got the potential for um, disaster being stuck to the eye in the wrong way as well, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, can you imagine if we all got irons out? That would be. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's the bondage web's great, but there is something quite nice about the fabric not being completely mm. like uh, you know stuck fast. And it gives you a bit more opportunity because the other thing you can do with your stitching is if you were to pull your stitches, if you did a series of running stitches, you would pull them really tight. It would cause the, the fabric to pucker. So it adds a kind of another layer of texture, um, which is quite nice. So, you know, even if you're just using a, a thin dressmaker's um, thread, uh, it, you can get quite interesting results. I didn't talk to you about random stitching. So, wherever it's gone. So, if you are a teacher and you happen to be taking this back into your classroom, um, there's something really nice about, if I pin my thing again, hold on. There's something quite nice about that kind of haphazard um, stitches, so shorts and longs, um, which again will create texture on that fabric. It will make the fabric kind of pucker in, in different ways. And it doesn't matter, you know, it takes away that sort of, um, that problem of people feeling that stitching should look neat, because actually, I don't think it should necessarily. I agree. <laughs> so do uh... <laughs> And one thing I would always say as the, the final thing, when you stitched everything, turn your fabric over and take a, take a, rubbing of the back of your fabric oh. because you'll have lovely marks and textures and it's again you know that's another outcome in your sketchbook yeah, right. so always always look at the back of your fabric oh joy lovely i think that is um i think that's a wrap brilliant <laughs> um thank you everyone for um for attending we will be so like I said, I will send out the evaluations um, and I will let you all have PowerPoints um, and recordings. Uh, we have also made some worksheets to go alongside the, the, um, the video for those who couldn't attend. So I'll make sure those get sent out as well. Um, other than that, uh, I'm going to end the workshop there. Uh, thank you to everyone who's thank joined you. Me. Thanks for joining. <laughs> See you later. Bye, Thanks, bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.